Are certain exercises making your joints hurt? Do you avoid those exercises or just go lighter? Listen to this. All right, our next caller is Kyle from Maryland. Hey, Kyle, how can we help you? Hey, guys, how are you doing? Good. Um, thank, good. Thank you for allowing me to come on here and ask my question. And as always, thank you for all that you guys do for the community. Um, my question is specifically in regards to trigger or mobility days. Um, so I'm currently in phase two of MAPS performance. My second time running performance. Uh, I bought it at the beginning of last year, ran it then, and then I ran uh, anabolic, finished up anabolic, moved back into performance. Through anabolic, I uh, felt great, kind of stuck to the trigger sessions as programmed, moved into performance, and um, on the mobility sessions, I seemed to be overdoing it. So when you guys talk about practicing a movement or kind of tailoring your guys' programs towards an individual, would you suggest maybe doing some of these movements such as practicing like a clean or a yoke walk towards the end of a foundational day? Or would you suggest keeping it on a, on a mobility day? But when you talk about practicing and like a weight, are we thinking like 20 to 30% of like a, a max or I tend to find myself maybe in like a 50 to 60% weight wise of a max. So having a few more aches and pains through performance or just looking for some guidance on maybe tailoring it more towards what I continue to like to do with uh, being a little bit more athletic and looking forward to hearing from what you guys have to say. Okay. Well, um, so here, here's a, a, a nice rule of thumb. When you feel like you're overdoing it, your, your body's talking to you and you feel like, oh, man, this might be a little bit too much. Aches, pain, stiffness, right? You probably right? are. <laughs> you, well, uh, <laughs> when you, if you think you are, you probably yeah, are. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. uh, in other words, you, you are, but here's what I here's the rule of thumb. The first thing that I would uh, change is the intensity. That's mm -hmm. the first the factor, the first component to manipulate. So rather than taking those movements out, just reduce the, in, the, the intensity way down. Start with that. So you said 20 to 30%. Do that. Just mm -hmm. bring the intensity way down. And what ends up happening is they end up start, they, they start to become more uh, recovery minded. They start to facilitate recovery more than creating damage. Now, if that doesn't work, then I would start to take movements out and just include uh, more rest. You would, you would do that with what he, so he brought up like car yoke carries and what it was the other one? Like those are yeah, kind of those cleans. Are, yeah, farmer walks. And, yeah, not really. Yeah, something, farmer walks. Yeah. Probably something I would put on my foundational days and then add that to the end yeah. of my workout. Yeah, I, mean, you I could, would say that, but also too, I mean, there's a way to do farmer walks where you're really just hyper focused on your posture and yes, you're doing more sure. of a posture walk. Yes. Um, and I think that that would be a good option for you could carry weights that aren't like super demanding uh, and, and just really just focus on keeping your body under control and great <laughs> posture uh, and, and stacked well. So um, I think there's a way to do it. And I think that uh, you're on the right track in terms of thinking you need to reduce your intensity and kind of bring that down because I honestly, I think there's a lot of value in practicing these movements at a really, really low intensity. Totally. And you see a lot of Olympians do this uh, specifically. So they hone in on the skill of, of that specific movement. So, so totally in the, in the comment, like on what, on the other side of the question, which was, should I put them on foundational days, technically doing all the exercises that are hard on one day, is going to be more demanding than even splitting them up and doing them more frequently. So I know that sounds sometimes counterintuitive, but it's not. It's actually worse to do all the intense stuff on one day uh, rather than just lowering the intensity and doing those movements on the following day. So that's where I would start. I would start do exactly what Justin is saying. There's a lot of value in those movements with light weight. There's tons. And you just really, you're just, and if you ever watch, I don't think, I don't know if Justin's ever done a video on this, but I'll see him sometimes doing these in the studio mm -hmm. where he's doing a farmer walk and he's holding like, you know, 40 pound dumbbells, which is, you know, he could easily do these with 120 pound dumbbells, but he's walking right. with like super purpose, very focused, you know, uh, posture is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's heel toe, it's lined up, it's activated core. And so he's making 
a lot out of that movement, but the damage on the body is super low. And in, in many cases, it's actually it actually facilitates recovery. Are are all those movements in performance? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of them are not the the power cleans, but uh, high pulls are. And I I suggest actually to a lot of athletes to replace that the second time you run it uh, with cleans if that's a so focus to, of yours. So to me, that's what I would do with some of these movements that you like doing. Is I would I would find exercises inside performance and replace it on my foundational days, and then stick. To, Solely to mobility on mobility days. Yeah, that's another. That's another. I good mean, option, that's yeah. that's what I, I would. I would find movements that are in performance that you that are that you could interchange some of these movements in there, and I'd put it on my foundation. I still would take the advice though of having days where I go light. Yeah, and because I do this right, so I'll, every once in a while you'll see me kick my shoes off. I'll go barefoot, and you'll see me do these carries with a lightweight, and I'm just I'm I'm paying attention to the way my my foot hits the ground, and I'm like mm -hmm. actually like gripping my toes totally. on the grass while. I walk and I'm thinking about my posture. My chest is high. My I'm tucking my chin, like, yeah. and I'm just I'm thinking about every every part of the movement, and I'm f more focused on how I move than I am how strong I am. But then maybe I'll come back on the next week, and I'm like, you know, now, now I want to test my strength a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then I do want to carry some heavy weight. If when I do those, I definitely want to replace it with something else that's probably intense inside the foundational days and it would go there and i i, I mean this is this is all personal right so this is this isn't you have to do it this way but i like in performance i like sticking to the to mobility work like that it's switching that mindset of, that's a good point it's just this is all about you know mobility and reco active recovery i don't like blending my active recovery type of mindset with something that is you know, challenging like that, like that where I'm going to be pushing the intensity mm -hmm. or even an exercise that I like to push the intensity because then I'm, I'm more likely to do that where it's like, it's a, like, just like, you know, we tease Sal sometimes about his music and stuff, but this is where like I even shift my <laughs> shift my music right. Oh, like, I do that. Yeah. Like it's mobility. Right. Day. Like I don't I don't want to throw Lamb of God or Rage Against the Machine on when I'm doing mobility. No. I'm gonna do so. Like that's when I listen to my hip hop. Right. I'm gonna listen to something kind of easy. Country. Listening. Don't lie. Our country. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I'll listen right. to something like that, nice and it's a whole mindset. Right. That's my mobility days are. You know, and I had to do this because I, I come from a place of the overtraining and, and pushing the intensity all the time and always wanting to see what I can do. And so, you know, when I go into my mobility days, I don't like to, to, to muddy that or convolute it with some other type of movement that I'm going to be more likely to yeah. push intensity. And, you know, consider this too, Kyle, if a movement is too much, then that means it has no value. So what you don't want to do is get stuck in the, oh man, I don't want to skip that exercise because it's such a valuable exercise. Well, if that exercise is too much, it's not valuable. So, and I think we, right. sometimes we do that. We think, oh, I don't want to skip cleans. I don't want to skip farmer's walk. Those are so good. And they are when they're appropriate. When they're not appropriate, they're not valuable. So that's the mentality that you have to have when you're training. But honestly, intensity. If people just manipulated intensity uh, appropriately, you, you could get away with doing a lot of stuff. You really could. So you don't yeah. necessarily... And, and what Adam said about mindset is totally true. But you can also do this. Uh, and I've done this before. I've done traditional exercises, let's say traditional bodybuilding exercises with the men mobility mentality. So like if I'm going to do squats to build my muscle, I might have 315 on there, 365. If I'm doing it for mobility, it's 135. I'm going slow. I'm Pausing sitting at the at bottom. The bottom yeah. yeah. I'm challenging my range of motion. Now it's like a mobility movement. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Okay. Do you have maps prime pro or prime by the way? Cause I think those are really yes. good. Okay. okay good. Yes, I do. All right. You know, there's nothing that doesn't say also that on those other days, uh, you just take you take some individualized correctional exercise and mobility movements from Prime Pro, and doing those uh, in replace of the mobility sessions that are in performance, just to make it more individualized. That's also an option. I also want to just commend you for for having the awareness too of knowing that you're probably overreaching a bit because your body's trying to talk to you. It's it's amazing to me. Uh, how, how many people, including myself, ignore those signals, you know, and want to just keep pushing through it. And so the fact that you already recognize that your body's kind of talking to you, I need to modify or change yep. something. Um, it's, it's the right question you're asking. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem, Kyle. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. 
You know, it's it's a it's a little frustrating when they have the programs. I want to give them for free. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't realize that we we programmed all of those into performance. I'm Not, trying to picture where they're. Yeah. Where they're, no, so we actually have those in some of the mobility days, and they're specifically for um like like farmer walks for instance like it's athletes for, yeah it's for athletes it's also supposed to be light it's not supposed to be like a super demand that's why i don't know because it's not programmed yeah. into foundational Dude, it's, I didn't because we have a couple different versions of mobility sessions in there yeah and i'll tell you man uh farmer walks and overhead carries huh? and, and these movements it's okay i'm diving deep in yeah. these. <laughs> those, uh, those movements done light versus heavy totally different no you're it's right. such a different experience it's such and it's such a great thing that i think most people do don't do no. and and it, it was a it was a great opportunity to highlight that because I've seen all of us do that I've seen yeah. all of us mm -hmm. have a day where you're doing something really really light that traditionally is done yeah. with a lot of load yep. and and that's what it, what it looks like I, I love to kick my shoes off on that's that exactly what I was gonna bring up yeah I do that barefoot it's yes. the perfect time to do yeah, that yeah I do yes. it naked but okay so here's the yeah, I don't of do course it. So, you do. just to give an example for someone listening or watching that's like well what is the what is the weight difference between the two because that's a big question right. What do you mean lower intensity? Do I drop the weight in half? I'll give you an example. If I do trap bar uh, uh, farmer walk, so that's a trap bar deadlift bar, and I'll do a farmer walk. If I'm going heavy, I'll go up to 405, 455. That's the heavy version. When I'm going light, one, it's it's 135, yeah. 100 mm -hmm. pounds. That's how big the difference is, I mean, the, but what we're talking about. The truth is the, the weight should not – be that actually relevant. Well, I'm saying it's, that you know just saying? so it's, people it's, it's know. It's so light. Yes. That I almost think it's like, I just want to be holding something. It's more about so, controlling your body. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's like, you know, you pick a weight that the thing that, you know, when you stop your set, it's not because it, it got too heavy for you to no. hold. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.